We have a problem. People are getting better at Rocket League faster than they ever have before. Yet most tutorials out there are old, outdated, or just plain wrong. So to make sure you don't fall behind and waste time on stuff that doesn't work anymore, I'm going over the top 10 most outdated tips I still hear people preaching that should now be avoided if you want to keep up and actually climb rank in 2023. If we haven't met before, my name's Luke and I'm known as a top 0.1% coach and for running Rocket League's number one live coaching program called the Grand Champ Roadmap 2.0. Inside, we take gold through champ rank players like you up to Grand Champ in just six weeks or less. But since apparently Jack joined as head coach just a few weeks back, and won the regional. Everyone's been DMing to get in, and we now have over 110 of 125 spots sold out early for upcoming 2023 class. So if you want access to our January launch, DM me on Discord with the keyword spring, and we can talk details. I'll have my Discord first link down below, and let's talk outdated tips you should avoid. Outdated tip number one is you should go back for corner boost on kickoffs. I get a lot of questions from players asking whether they should cheat up or go back for corner boost on kickoffs. And to this day, I still think the most winning play is to cheat up on every kickoff. Yes, sometimes you'll be playing 2v2 and you'll cheat up. Your teammate will lose a kickoff terribly and you'll get scored on because of it. But that doesn't mean cheating is what got you scored on. It means your teammate just with the kickoff. At the very low ranks, it can be annoying when your teammate loses a kickoff badly, but the truth is getting possession after kickoff is too important to miss out on. Say he doesn't cheat, so I know I can easily just control this. There we go. If there's any sort of tie on the kickoff, they're gonna have a free one-on-one -on -one against you to open things up. Since we always wanna start with the ball and possession is number one, just cheat up and you'll win way more games in the long run. Number two, copying pro settings. I remember when I was a new player, the first thing I did was look up my favorite pro at the time and copy down all his settings. Of all the things I've done in my Rocket League career, to date, that is my number one regret. The problem is, these days, the gap between pros mechanics and the average player's mechanics has become so wide that pros have a completely different skill set than new players. They benefit from having super high sensitivities that allow them to make really jittery, really quick movements. Yet, if you're a new player and you try to copy these same high sensitivities, you're probably going to completely lose control of your car and make it two times or three times as hard to learn. Instead, what I found is better for most low rank players if you start out with a lower ground and aerial sensitivity than most pros play with. If you want more info on this, I'll have my newest controller settings video linked with a card on screen. You should absolutely go check that out, but definitely don't just copy pro settings. This is something that a lot of people think will help them, but can actually stab you in the foot. Tip number three just play the game to get better. While of course this is true on the surface, I think when a lot of new players ask how to get better, they're confused when a streamer or somebody tells them that they just need to hit the ball more or play more to get good. Yes, it's true that for the majority of the low, low ranks, think silver, gold, maybe into platinum a bit, you kind of just have to learn how to hit the ball to rank up. What's not true is that playing ranked is the fastest way to do it. The truth is, if you want to keep up with how mechanical the meta is getting, the best way to do it is to sink a lot more time into free play and into training than you probably think. Especially at the low, low ranks, I've heard some of the fastest improvement has come from players that put anywhere from 60 to 90% of their time exclusively into free play. So whether you like free play, whether you like training packs, whether you like workshop maps, which we'll talk about in a second, the more you train outside ranked, the more you'll pass up people, especially below Grand Champ. Number four, free play only is the fastest way to rank up. A lot of people look at the pros who mainly just use free play these days and think the fastest way to rank up is just using free play. And while nobody has the exact answer, some of the fastest improving players in my coaching program say they've benefited most from two specific workshop maps, Dribble 2 Overhaul and Lethemir's Rings. Maps like Dribble 2 Overhaul allow you to train dribbling in such a fast-paced environment that allows you to get more reps 
competitions in way quicker than, say, free play. Plus, having challenges and objectives like flying through rings in Lethemir's rings forces you to focus on your car control and not just go through the motions while you're training. When you combine this stuff with free play, that's how I think you progress two times or three times as fast as the average player out there. Free play is still great for overall recoveries and speed. Things like trading packs are great for specific setups like ceiling shots and wall play, but certain long-term mechanics like aerial car control, ground dribbling, these are gonna be best trained through workshop maps. And when you pick the right training, that's how you're gonna get results faster than if you just mindlessly grind free play for 12K hours like many of the pros used to have to. Outdated tip number five, stop demo chasing. If we've learned anything from this last RLCS and regionals, it's that demos are more important in the current meta than they've ever been. A lot of people were debating when Rocket League came out whether demos should even be used in ranked, whether they were just toxic or a waste of time. And from what we've seen with players like Tom picking up 20 demos in a game and winning, the answer is demos are clearly here to stay. So I'm not saying go out of your way to get demos, but every time you're rotating through the midfield, you have to look for opportunities for demos. This is one of the easiest ways to have a massive impact in your games, even when you're not on the ball. So don't sleep on demos. If you're somebody who rarely gets a demo during the game, you need to change that as soon as possible, because if you're not demoing at least a few times a game, you're missing out. Outdated tip number six, play 1v1. The ways you outplay plats and diamonds and just lower ranked players in general in 1v1 is not the same way that you're going to outplay a champ or a grand champ in 1v1. And generally when you're at the low ranks, you just don't have enough mechanics in your tool belt for 1v1 to really be meaningful practice. What I recommend to my players now when I'm coaching is actually just focus on playing whatever game mode is fun for you when you're starting out until you climb I'm up to around champ in your preferred game mode, whether it's 2v2 or 3v3. At that point, now that you have a couple mechanics, 1v1 is going to be more meaningful for you. And you can actually stress test those mechanics really well and benefit from the extra reps 1v1 gives you. But if you're super low ranked, 1v1 isn't game changing. At that point, you're better off just doing free play if your only goal is getting better as fast as possible. Number seven, Power clears are the most important. When I watch a lot of tutorials for new players, people will just say that you need to learn how to hit the ball hard. And while this is true, it leads to a really bad habit that I see all throughout the diamond and champ ranks, which is simply giving away possession. One of the absolute worst things you can do when you have a ball and nobody's pressuring you is to clear it away. Since players have gotten more mechanical, it's now better to have the ball on your side of the map than not have the ball in the attacking zone. When you give away possession, you make it really hard to beat better players and better players will punish you for letting them have the ball all the time. So going into your next couple games, I want you to focus on holding onto the ball whenever possible and only booming it if you see somebody contesting you and if you can easily put it over their head. And all of a sudden you're gonna find yourself attacking much more and not having to play defense because you're coughing the ball all the time. Number eight, watch pro replays. While I think it's great to watch pro replays for inspiration and for fun, if you're an intermediate player, I would be very careful about trying to copy what any pro is doing. I've talked with many pros about how your gameplay changes based on what mechanics you have. And you've got to understand that in many cases, pros do stuff because they know they can bail themselves out if it fails. For many players, if you just try to copy what the pros are doing, you're going to find yourself over committing a lot, playing way too much on the ball, and putting yourself in situations that you just can't recover from as quickly as your favorite pro. Make sure that if you're going to copy anybody better than you, that you allow yourself extra time and space based on how much better their mechanics are than you. An easy way around all of this to avoid just picking up any bad habits is to try to copy players that are just a little bit better than you rather than leagues ahead. If you're looking to play and watch players slightly better than you, my Discord is actually the largest free improvement Discord. You should absolutely join because it's completely free and you can leave whenever you want. But yeah, study people around your rank. Don't just copy the pros because you can seriously mess yourself up without realizing it. 
Number nine, play casuals before ranked. A lot of people ask me if it's good to play casual before ranked. And from my experience, it's actually one of the worst things you can do. The idea of queuing casual to get warmed up is great. And of course, a bad warm up is still better than no warm up. But the problem with casual before ranked, it encourages a lot of bad habits before you play. Maybe it's just me, but every time I queue casual, players are ball chasing more, playing more boost hungry, and generally just making decisions poorly. And if you use that as how you're preparing for ranked, most times it's going to end up rubbing off on you and you're going to start rotating in ranked like people do in casual lobbies. I think it's better to just warm up in free play, get your car control down, queue ranked, and then if you want to do casual after, go after, but try not to queue casual before ranked. Finally, the tip that I'm probably going to get the most hate for is just pick up more small pads. Don't get me wrong. Picking up boost is one of the things that I most commonly point out to low rank players and even people all the way up to champ that they could do better. But when it comes to high ranked play, something that I'm noticing in the pro scene and in high ranked lobbies is people who are more boost greedy are winning more. I think as people have gotten more mechanical, the reward of having super high boost is better. And a good player midair with 100 boost is now nearly unstoppable. So at the low ranks, absolutely focus on picking up small pads and rotating properly. It'll carry you to GC and even beyond. But as you progress through the higher and higher ranks, something you should look out for is for pauses in the play and any extra time you can squeeze to grab boost or position better when you're not on the ball. So yeah, you could probably always pick up more small pads, but picking up big boost isn't necessarily bad. Only stop doing it if it's taking you away from the play. All right, hopefully that was helpful. And if you made it to this point in the video, you're probably a competitive player. So subscribe if you haven't already and definitely hit me up on Discord if you want access to the community or DM me for more details on my coaching. As always, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.